the L.A. John Doe, 2000, identified as Rodolfo Reyes Jimenez, also known as Ralph Jimenez. This one is a little different from normal because there's still work to be done. Ralph Jimenez was found in an alleyway by firefighters who responded to a 911 call about a fire in the alley. This was a Los Angeles neighborhood in April of 2000. The implication is that Ralph was homeless. He had a ring that authorities had hoped would identify him, but it didn't. His identity was discovered in May of 2022 by a fingerprint. There are a number of fingerprint identifications as of late, and while this one doesn't say it was by the FBI, I do know in some other cases there was a new program developed that they've been running prints back through, prints that couldn't be identified before. Even his age is up in the air. They list it as 34 to 56, which is a pretty wide window. We don't know what caused his death, but we do know his name. His body, however, has not been claimed. They have not been able to identify a next of kin. If you know who this man is or who his family is, please call the number on your screen. Ralph Jimenez went unidentified for 22 years. The Port Beau Jane Doe, also known as The Bride, identified as Evie Anna Rotter. This one takes place in Port Beau, Spain, on the 4th of September, 1990. A young woman was found hanging by a pine tree next to the local cemetery. They quickly concluded, due to lack of evidence, that anyone else was involved and that she took her own life. The authorities scoured the area in hopes of leads, but all that was found that may help identify her was her apparel. Eventually, a lead came in suggesting she'd been with two boys in the local area on a terrace the night before. The lead, however, went nowhere. They did note, however, that her pants were not sold anywhere within the country. Could this mean the identification wasn't happening because she was from elsewhere? But if so, why go to another country and take your own life? For the next two decades, they hit a brick wall and asked these questions. They knew she was well-groomed. Someone was missing her somewhere. They began to refer to her as the bride based on what they describe as her clean appearance. Her photos were shared with the European police forces in 2001 and they made a public plea to exhume her body and collect DNA. They were eventually given clearance to do this, but when they went to exhume the body, they found they couldn't locate it. They were horrified to learn the young woman was buried simply in a mass grave. By 2015, the Spanish police began sharing her photos on Twitter to reach more people worldwide, but once again, nothing happened. No leads were forthcoming. That is, until Girona Forensics, located in Spain, stated that because of the concern regarding legal issues, they had carefully embalmed her so that she could be exhumed and have DNA extracted. They once again requested finding her body and having DNA taken. But it's unclear why they would expect a different result this time, as they tried before and they couldn't locate her. It wouldn't be until 2022 that answers were to be had. In 1990, a girl named Evie had disappeared from Florence. Evie Ann Router lived in Lana, Italy with her parents and had just completed a degree in accounting. She spoke four languages, Italian, English, German, and French, and recently found a job in the export business. Evie had a lot to look forward to. She had a little bit of time before starting her job, so she traveled to Ireland with friends in the summer of 1990 because her new job was not supposed to start until September 11th. She decided to travel to Florence and visit her sister, who was attending university there, traveling by train to go see her. Life was good for Evie. On that final day, September 3rd, 1990, she had breakfast with her sister. In fact, Evie hadn't even dressed yet when her sister left for class. However, it wasn't abnormal for her sister to leave a note and go out and explore. And that's what she did. So when her sister returned home from class and found the note saying that she was going to Siena, it wasn't at all alarming. Siena, however, is still in Italy, and not that far. 73 kilometers, or about 43 miles. It wasn't until she didn't return that there was believed to be cause for alarm. When she didn't come back, her sister called the parents, and they hadn't heard from Evie either. It would be verified later that Spanish broadcasts had actually reached the area her family lived in, but no one placed the cases together for 32 years. After all, she was in Italy, 
no one expected her to be in Spain. While being in another country outside of the U.S. is more common, even in this case, it was a stretch. Her family suffered with her absence, not knowing where Evie went. Then there was a stroke of luck where none had been before. There was a program on TV about finding the bride. Much like Unsolved Mysteries, it aired in Vienna, Austria, and shockingly, someone actually recognized Evie. It was a fluke of sorts that someone contacted the editorial staff saying he met her in the summer of 1990 in Spain. This led to the release of clothing items, which Evie's shocked family were able to identify immediately. So instead of DNA or fingerprints, it ended up being clothing and an eyewitness that led to her identification. It turns out they knew what she was wearing that day because her sister saw what was in the suitcase and they had known what was missing. It still doesn't explain, however, why Evie was in Spain in the first place or why she took her own life, or did she? The entire situation is puzzling. Why go so far to take your own life? Or was it, perhaps, as others had done, to avoid identification and pain to the family? The view on this quickly changed, and where it was so dismissed early before, it was reevaluated, and they no longer think it was at her own hand. The knot in the noose was professional, suggesting it was done to mimic the act of taking her own life. She was also found too low for it to be of her own hand. Now they believe it was a murder. But who or why is still unknown. Evie's case has been reopened. She was declared legally dead in 2011. Evie Routner went unidentified for 32 years. The Baltimore Jane Doe, August 6, 1996 This young woman was the victim of a train accident in Baltimore, Maryland on August 6, 1996. She had very long brown hair that was braided and brown eyes. She had good dental care and had fillings, and she was wearing a tricolor ring. She was about 5 foot 7 and 180 pounds, although NamUs indicates they were unable to estimate a height, so I'm not sure how accurate that is. What I find confusing about this case is she's depicted as young, but they estimate her age to be 18 to 60 on NamUs which is wide, but the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children says 18 to 25, as does the Doe Network. Working on that estimate, her family would be searching for someone from 1971 to 1978. One of the listings states that she may have suffered from depression, which implies this was intentional rather than accidental. Her cause of death is listed as traumatic injuries and unrecognizable. So if someone thinks they may know her, I wouldn't let this image be a deciding factor. The August 1996 Baltimore Jane Doe has gone unidentified for 25 years. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks, everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.